The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Small Cap Roundup, with your host, Kate Stalter. Now, Kate Stalter. Well, good morning. Happy Thursday, everybody. I guess if you're a bull, it is really a happy Thursday. We've got another Euro-driven rally. We've got this morning, ECB President Mario Draghi said, quote, unquote, he will do whatever he has to do to prevent the Eurozone from collapse. What did he say? The only way out of this crisis is to have more Europe not less Europe. Okay. And a lot of analysts are commenting this morning that could mean some more aggressive bond buying, some enhancements to some of those bailout programs, ultimately perhaps even printing money. In other words, he's prepared to go outside some of the legal frameworks that were earlier established for the Eurozone and to make the ECB a little bit more like the Fed in the U.S., so that resulted in some jubilation this morning, although as you can see, if you're tracking the major indices, we are off earlier highs, but still with some significant gains there across the board. Just taking a look there at where we're at right now. Now, Citigroup issued a report saying it has raised its estimate to 90% chance that Greece will exit the euro. But, you know, most analysts will tell you these days the problem they don't believe is not Greece anymore, but Spain and Italy. Although after today, after this morning, Draghi's comments, we're seeing borrowing costs down, yield on the Spanish and Italian bonds down sharply this morning. I, I speak to, I do some interviews, quite a few interviews for moneyshow.com, and, and go over there and check those out. They're under the Daily Guru section. I also do a number of videos over there at some of the Money Show events around the country. The other day, I got the opportunity to do a very interesting interview with former Dallas Fed President Robert McTeer. And if you are a fan of Larry Kudlow over on CNBC, as I am, you see Bob McTeer as a guest over on Larry Kudlow's show quite a bit. Now, Bob had some interesting things to say. He was just contrasting Spain and Greece when we were talking the other day and he pointed out that Spain's problem is different than Greece that Greece just had it out of just just had an out of control government uh, not seeing that brewing anywhere else are we mm -hmm. uh, but in Spain they had a housing bubble and he attributes that to what ultimately really caused a lot of damage to the Spanish banks so he was commenting that Spain had actually been pretty well managed fiscally quite unlike Greece, but it was the housing bubble and bust in Spain that really caused a lot of damage to the financials over there. So that was pretty interesting. What I wanted to do today, the typical thing I do, I start out with a look at the IWM and just taking a look, just noticing where it's at relative to moving averages. And obviously, we've got a little bit of, just taking a look here, it's right about even with its five-day exponential moving average. That's looking pretty good. Moved above its 50-day. But of course, you had some of the longer term, some of the shorter term trend lines. Let me just see here what we've got. We've got the 15-day exponential above the five-day. You'd like to see that crossover. So not not bad. Got some, some pretty bullish signs here. You've also got the 50-day, as you want to see it, below the 5-day and the 15-day. So that's nice. And the 200-day even lower than that. So it's really those shorter-term exponential moving averages. I tend to watch those pretty closely. Would very much like to see, uh, if you're going to take a bullish position here, the 5-day exponential line cross above the 15-day. Who knows? You might see that happen even as of today. So let's see here. This is the small cap show, but I do see that we, we take calls 
about stocks of all market cap because I tend to analyze them in a pretty similar fashion. And we've got one here that is regarding one of the small caps that I have been tracking and have been talking about quite a bit. And it's Heartland Payment Systems. I put the ticker up there, HPY. And I understand we have Mike in Pennington, New Jersey. That That's an area of the country I know very well, Mike. I have a lot of family who lives in that area. I've lived in North Jersey myself, but never in South Jersey. But it's beautiful down there. It's a nice area. It's actually some parts of the horse country where I live. Yeah, okay, okay. It's funny because people don't tend to think of that when they think about New Jersey, do they? I think they think about, like, Elizabeth and Newark. Right. <laughs> a totally different thing. Let them think that. That means they're not coming. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've put up a chart there for HPY, and this is one that I've been tracking for quite some time. We do have our Low Price Leaders newsletter that tracks the small cap and low price names. The latest edition just went out yesterday. So what, what are you looking at with regard to this one, Mike? Well, I noticed that PayPal made a big boost in the eBay's earnings, so I was looking mm-hmm. at that for, for earnings play next week. Um, mm-hmm. I know that it looks kind of, the chart looks kind of risky, though, because it's gone up a lot. Um, so I was wondering how, how, what you thought of it. Because I, I yeah, remember let's... you uh, talking about the stock once upon a time. Right, right. Yeah, this is what I, I agree with you just with regard to the potential in this online payment and electronic transaction space. It is it is pretty, uh, does have a lot of potential right now. Now, what I'm looking at on this one, it's, it's consolidating below that high of 34 that it reached back in the early part of May. Now, you are right that this has risen quite a bit, and that is that that is a little bit of some reason to be cautious here. We haven't seen one of these uh, consolidations. I'm just kind of, I've got it up there on Tiger TV on a daily chart. I'm going to put it up here on a weekly chart for you. You haven't seen one of these consolidations in quite some time that undercuts a prior low. Actually, not since 2009, in fact. So I absolutely agree with you on that point, Mike. However, what you might be able to see here, and we do have the earnings coming up, as you mentioned, if you do see some kind of trend along some of these shorter-term moving averages, that could be something pretty that that could turn out to be pretty constructive. I notice we have some intermediate resistance at around 3154. So that could be an entry point, but if you're a little bit more aggressive, you might want to see and again, coming back to the moving average crossovers that I was talking about just a moment ago, we have the 15 day is above the five-day exponential moving average right now. So you'd like to see the shorter-term average cross higher. You know, that could be something quite constructive. You might see some opportunities to grab some gains in this one pretty soon, but I completely agree with you. It really does depend on what we see with earnings. Right. Yeah, so you're just watching this stock right now. You're not not in this one, are you? I I have a few shares, like 300 shares. Okay. Okay. What? What? Uh, at what point did you buy these? I got a uh, hundred on, on Monday, and it was a downdraft on Monday. Uh huh. And then I got uh, some more right you know, two, two, a day or two ago. So I'm right around here, twenty nine fifty is my average. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. And as always, just remember to to put some stops in there so you don't get suddenly shaken out. I mean, in these crazy market conditions, who knows what. Uh, Angela Merkel or somebody could say tomorrow and and, right. and just put the kibosh on this whole thing. You know, even even companies like Heartland. Uh, and I noticed this one's this one's this one's headquartered not too far from you, is it? It's in Princeton, I believe. No, is that right? Right. I, I. It's not. It's not far from you at all. Yeah. But I, mm-hmm. you know, the thing about earnings is you wake up in the morning and there's no way of stopping out sometimes. So. Well, that's know. that's exactly you right. Yeah. It, yeah, and I, I kind of, I, I kind of, I actually really like to not, not get in on these things too soon ahead of the earnings report for exactly that reason. I mean, y- you might miss out on something that has some big rally, like we had lumber liquidators the other day. But you know what? The pullback after that initial gap higher 
will often give you another chance to get in. It, it, if, it's a, if it's a strong stock that the institutions continue to have some confidence in, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the last train leaving. So it, you often do have another opportunity on the pullback. Sometimes so, I use options, so I don't I limit my risk to whatever I use the options for. Yep, or, yep, or, I, I agree with that. That's a that's a that's a good strategy as well. I like that one too. That's uh, I, I I knew a lot of people back when uh, back when Apple was was rallying. They they had entered Apple uh, using options and it kept their costs very low and really made out like bandits back in the day with that. So that's right. certainly a, a possible strategy as well. Well, great call, Mike. Thank you so much. And uh, call Thank back. You. Let's uh, let's talk again about what happens with this one after the earnings report. Sounds like a plan. Have All right, day, Mike. Yeah. Have a great day. Bye bye. Yeah, that's that's uh, that was a good question, and that's I want to just point out great opportunity for me to talk a little bit about what we do there in the low price leaders newsletter. As I mentioned there to Mike, that just went out yesterday, and just to remind everybody, get in on it now. We have the introductory rate. You can lock into that thirty seven fifty a month. It is going to be going up eventually. And, you know, this is a, what we point out in that newsletter are stocks like Heartland Payment Systems that are not those household names, the smaller caps. This one has a market cap of $1.1 billion, moves about 294,000 shares a day. So right about where I like to see that liquidity level. I, I normally screen for about 300,000. Uh, but this one is this one's close enough, right around there. Because y- you don't want to see something that's so thinly traded if you're going to be entering into any kind of swing trade, which is which is mostly the style that we are doing in this newsletter. Really following the strength as these names trend above their key moving averages. Occasionally, if we have some kind of market downtrend. We will capitalize on that with some kind of short trade that will take advantage of that, normally using ETFs. Really keeping it pretty simple. I don't want this to be the kind of thing where people feel like they can't go about their day, that you need to be kind of tracking every move in these stocks all the time. I want you to be able to get the newsletter. We'll set some stops for you. You can put some alerts on your phone. So if you're out and about during the day, you you can know if uh, if something triggers a particular point through your brokerage, of course. You can do that. So that's that's what we're looking at there. We also, hence the name, Low Price Leaders, we also track stocks trading between $5 and $12 a share. I consider those low price. Not talking about penny stocks here. Again, we're not going to get you into any of these super risky trades. I want to we're putting in stops. Risk management is a very key part of the methodology. And moving averages are a lot of what I'm using here just as an indicator that we have a trend that's established. I also do some pretty basic fundamental screening. Not so concerned about PE multiples, although sometimes that can factor in. But my main thing I'm looking for is earnings growth driven by revenue growth in these smaller names. So liquidity and some good earnings and revenue growth. Okay, stick around. 877-927-6648. Give me a call. We'll be right back after these messages. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows. Plus, see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to archives of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, all right. Welcome back. You are listening to the Small Cap Roundup here on TFNN. I'm Kate Stalter, your host. Give a call, 877-927-6648. Wanted to take a look at some of these NASDAQ stocks that are among some of the bigger movers today. And, and of course, not uh, just kind of going to flip through some charts here. Not necessarily that they're all going to be among the small caps. Some of the mid caps are actually pretty fertile ground as well for some good price gains but here's a small cap that i put up in front of you that is moving today it's been a stock that's uh, in, in in the past has been a big leader and i owned this one a few years ago i really haven't even been tracking it too much lately although well i can see why based upon the technicals here i'm showing you a chart for shoe s h o o Stephen Madden, just love that ticker, S-H-O-O. -O. And I've got it there on a weekly chart on Tiger TV, so you can see that pullback. Let's put this on a daily. I can talk about this with even a little bit more granularity. So it's up today following an earnings report. It's actually one of the biggest movers in terms of being up on unusual volume on the NASDAQ today and that, that is something I look for I don't always tend to use 
volume as necessarily a primary indicator. I used to more than I do lately. Just because in the in the past year or so, price has tended to be a more reliable indicator in the current market cycle, the current part of the market cycle that we're in, that can change. You know, we just went through a phase there, and many attributed attributed it <laughs> to hard to say the influx of cheap money through quantitative easing that we saw back there a few months ago, where you saw a lot of these stocks, particularly the bigger cap names, where you, you, it was really more pronounced, where you saw lower volume price rises, quite unusual compared to what you would see historically. You would see more and more of the larger caps rallying to new highs on lower volume. So in any case, taking a look today at a small cap there, Steve Madden, not one that has been a technical favorite of mine, and even with today's big move, you still see a little bit of a problem there, and you can see there on the chart how you know it gapped up and then pulled back. You can clearly see that there on the candlestick there that we've got on the chart. Uh, not unusual for that to occur after a big move like this. I'm just looking at the chart here. So the problem you have right now is that you've still got that 50-day line beneath the 200-day. So that's a crossover I would like to see in that particular case. And this thing could perhaps be a stock to step into. Huh, get it? So just looking at the revenue growth, I mean strong revenue growth on this thing. And it's so funny because some of these clothing makers, this is fashion footwear, you know, you wouldn't necessarily think that this would be the kind of thing that people would be buying in, let's face it, is a weak, uncertain economy, has shown some terrific earnings growth. You've seen a little bit of deceleration in the, in the earnings growth rate. So that's a little bit of a, something to be aware of. But looking at double-digit earnings growth that analysts predict over the next couple of years. So this this could be something interesting. Now let me put this back on a weekly chart, do a little more analysis here on a weekly perspective. And this is something that we were talking about a little bit with Mike in the previous call, and this is a good opportunity to show you this. So notice on Tiger TV, I'm indicating the correction that occurred beginning about a year ago with that big decline that we saw there that started in late July, early August, back in 2011. And so you see a lot of stocks, and Stephen Madden included, pulled back below the prior consolidation. Okay, So it had a very modest little consolidation back in June of 11. Okay, Rallied to a new high out of that, and then pulled back into that consolidation, that market, market-wide pullback we had in the late summer, autumn, and even going into the winter. And then, consistent with the market, rallied along with the first quarter right here. So you did see that start to happen. Okay, so that's Stephen Madden. That's one of the big NASDAQ movers today. And liking what I'm seeing in this particular stock, I think it has some potential, especially if we see some of these moving average crossovers occur. This could be a very interesting candidate. All right, we'll be right back with the Small Cap Roundup right after this. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. 
Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning? Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market Insights, to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits ranged from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades had been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations, including precise stops and target profit zones, leaving nothing left to guessing. Log on to TFNN.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial. Make sure you're a subscriber the next time Market Insights subscribers close out multiple winning trades. Take action and sign up for your free trial today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation Location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney Financial Advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, First Vice President and Certified Financial Planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we have our European close. And as, as I'm sure many of you have been tracking, or as you can imagine today, we have some pretty significant gains on some of these European indices. And we have, last I looked, we still have the U.S. Uh, averages holding in there very well. And I'm just noticing, we have, I was just checking Apple, uh, just because I was noticing the NASDAQ composite was still, oh, okay, so the Dow is actually gaining now after a little bit after we had the european close and the s p a little bit now the nasdaq composite still up significantly even with apple down though so there you go so there's quite a bit of strength happening elsewhere nasdaq composite up about 1.05 percent right now and we've got apple trading a little bit to the to the downside, and the reason I point that out is just because Apple is such a significant part of the NASDAQ composite. Okay, put a chart up there. Actually, I didn't do it yet. Let me put this up there. I want to show you another shoe stock, and this is kind of a notorious one for those of us who remember 2007. 
Now, this is Crocs. <laughs> Funny name there, yeah, Croc. Not, not really, though, because th this thing... <sighs> Uh, you know, this this has been so lucrative for so many and so devastating for so many. So in 2007, if you recall, just that huge plunge that occurred, I believe it was October 31st, the trick for Halloween back in 2007. And what happened on this particular, back, back then what they realized is that they had to, to downwardly adjust their revenue estimates and the thing just really fell apart and that of course was right at the start of that big market pullback that happened right around November 1st 2007 lasted until March of 09 as we all well remember but just taking a look here so we saw what happened rallied to a high August 2011, just like we were just discussing with Stephen Madden. And then you see had another big meltdown in October of 2011, the October surprise there for Crocs. It happened again four years later. And again, it was on downward adjustments to the revenue estimates. And I'm seeing there in the Tiger Den a comment on great shoes. Yeah, you know what's interesting is that so many people... Uh, tend to mock sort of the traditional kind of Crocs. But they don't realize that the company makes a lot of other different products, even uh, women's dress shoes, that no, they look nothing like, <laughs> nothing like those traditional clog type of shoes. They, they, they do make a lot of different types of shoes. And interesting thing, I, I know some people who are vegan who don't like to wear leather, and for folks like that, some of these shoes are just terrific, made out of a number of products that don't have any sort of animal cruelty component to them. So some interesting markets there. Okay, so just taking a look at what we got. This has been a particularly ugly consolidation on this stock, but we are seeing Crocs as one of the NASDAQ's biggest gainers today, making a move of a little over 18%. We've got some unusual heavy volume here. Now, as you can see there, on the daily chart that I've put up, we have, again, that situation where you've got the 50-day line below the 200-day line. That is not what you want to see. I would really hesitate to even attempt to do anything on this one till you saw that moving average crossover. Now, not, not terrible when it comes to the earnings and revenue growth on this, although you have seen some quite significant earnings growth slowdowns over the past several quarters. That's not good. You don't want to see that. But you do have, on the other hand, some double-digit estimates looking at this uh, for the next couple of years. Wall Street expecting 19% growth in 2012, 18% earnings growth 2013. And as we know from this stock in particular, those can change. But it does show you a pretty decent amount of confidence right now. Market cap here, a little bit south of $1.5 billion. Good liquidity moves 1.7 million shares a day. So seeing some interesting things on this particular name. I, I really wouldn't enter a position on this one right now. I'd wait to see some um, stronger indicators in those moving averages. Okay, we've got Bob up in Greeley, Colorado, wants to talk about this. Bob, you're you're just pretty much due north of me. If I got in my car right now and got on the 25, I'd, I'd be up there near you guys uh, in several hours. <laughs> well, I've been to Santa Fe many times. I love it down there. Yeah, it's a, it's a very I, I interesting place. I bought some artwork and met some beautiful artists and bought some great artwork. But by the way, you were talking about Crocs. When it was yep. up at $60, Mr. Johnson, the CEO of Crocs, unloaded 12 million shares in one day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go back to your records and look at it. Yeah, yeah, there, there's, there, there's and often and some it, of that. It, it literally dropped the stock like 15 bucks in a day because I, I had people playing it, so... I mean, mm -hmm. I've been a uh, technical trader for 15 years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. I've, I've followed Crocs. I know people that work there. But anyhow. 
Yeah. What what are what are you uh, what are you looking at this stock at all right now, or yeah, have you kind of dropped I it? Buy Crocs. I have, <laughs> I've never even known to pair their shoes. I think they look stupid. I mean, well, I like a lot of people Sockety agree with you. Running shoes, Saucony and uh, uh-huh. uh, Asics. Okay. Oh yeah. I think. In fact, I've got uh, got a pair of Asics. I've got Crocs too. I own both of those brands. But uh, a lot of people agree with you, Bob, that they're that they're ugly shoes. But you know, like I was saying, they they make some products that are not what people normally think about, and maybe that's part of the problem is they don't really market some of their dress shoes and their nicer shoes maybe as much as they could uh, because the perception still remains that they're those uh, big kind of clunky clogs. You know. Got a question for you. Who, who yeah. bought out uh, Timberline? Timber. Oh, I believe that was Wolverine Worldwide. Wolverine okay. Worldwide. Okay. You're yeah. right. You're right. Because we used mm-hmm. to play Timberline. Mm-hmm. And that, they were kind of similar. They used to swing like a heartbeat, just mm-hmm. like playing natural gas. Anyway, yeah. I'll, I'll let you go. I love listening to you. Oh, great call, Bob. A, Thank you so much. You, call you again. you got a great show, but I, 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 I'm scared of playing these. Uh, I like to play stuff that plays minimum 2 million shares a day. Yeah, yeah. No, there's a lot of people with you, and I, I agree with you, and that is something that I do uh, like to caution about, that if you got to be very careful, put your stops in on these smaller names, and you can't treat this like this is something like uh, an Apple, for example. Uh, you know, well, not, not like in the I same can't ballpark. I see some of the overblown prices like Intuitive Surgical and stuff like that, but mm-hmm, anyway, mm-hmm. things are right. way out of, out of whack on their PEs and stuff, but anyway... Yeah, you see that a lot. Well, Bob, Enough thanks for the rhetoric. call. <laughs> no, call call again sometime. Great to hear from you. Thank no, you so I much. I always listen to you, Katie. Oh, terrific. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. And someday, come. let me know if you're in Santa Fe. Shoot well, me an email. Me some let me know. nice tips. You really have. Okay, you know, yeah, we I like to find these I like to find these names and I don't even I think I said yesterday when I was on Tom's show, I, I find these names that maybe you don't necessarily hear about that are some of the ones that are kind of below the radar, but I don't even they pop up on my screens. I am well, just using shoot, parameters you went on the screens. Over it about fifteen minutes ago, you know, in the big game mm-hmm. and stuff, and I know some people that have been playing that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean yeah. they bought it around ten dollars. That that's so, been I mean, another one of those. Yeah, know, they've they've made four hundred percent on it. Mm-hmm. That's good. You know, good for them. <laughs> so, I mean, they they got it way back. Uh, oh God, four years ago or something. So. Well, yeah. If you're prepared to to buy and hold, that can be an awfully risky proposition in these particular market conditions, though. Yeah. Uh, you know, if uh, especially well, on a they small cap. hundred shares, you know, at, at ten bucks, and, and I have friends that buy ten thousand shares at one time, and I said, "What are you doing that for?" Like GameStop. Right. Mm-hmm. GME. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why would you buy 10,000 shares of GameStop? You have to go see a psychiatrist. <laughs> and, and, and then I told him how to make the money, and he made $32,000 in four days. Okay. There you go. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ga- ga- going long in GameStop does not seem the way to do that. No, because they're closing stores, and you can buy their games cheaper. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I the, the whole retail model for that crowd, the brick and mortar retail model, it, it it that that whole business is going online. Never mind what happened with Zynga. Put that aside. The biz, you know, that's just a poorly managed company. But the 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 business of the gaming is going online. Oh so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> well, Bob. Thanks again. Thanks again. Right, Wonderful Kate, to hear I just from you. To inform you because that's what really dropped that stock, and then everybody on the inside was unloading it. Oh yeah, no, you see that a lot. You, you definitely you got got to watch the insider trading. Although you know, sometimes I mean, and, you know, what I mean by that is insider buy and sells. I don't mean anything uh, nefarious or illegal. But you know, a lot of times people panic. They watch these things, and it's it ends up being nothing because the guy is selling some shares because he's putting a kid through college or something. But mm-hmm. you, you know, you're right. When you see some kind of unusual number like that, that could that could tell you something. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, I well, don't Bob, believe any yeah. with the, with all these banks when they rate a stock that it's going to go up. I I short it. Right. Okay. That's that's another when way to Kramer play these. When go long, I go short. Oh yeah, I, I I work with Jim. He's a he's a he's a good guy. He's uh, I, I do I do some columns over at Real Money and. Uh, 
uh, you know, it's a lot, lot, a lot of everybody's got their market perspective, and it's just every, we all have to sort it out according to what fits our own risk tolerance, our objectives, and so yeah, forth. Well, in, I in the end, it's a computer, yeah. and I'm I'm running uh, a five minute chart right now, two days. So, and then mm-hmm. I run a daily and a weekly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, me too. All right, All right Bob. Katie. Thanks. Great, great to Thanks. talk to you today. Thanks. Okay. Nice talking Bye-bye. to you. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Very good. Good call. He makes some great points there. Now, I'm just taking a look here. Yeah, GameStop. I'm not sure what uh, would necessarily motivate anybody to want to go along in that particular name. Putting back a chart here for the IWM, I'm just kind of checking out the tiger den here and somebody points out IWM fading yeah you know and we're still we're still nicely up for the session but that's a very good point i typically in in the last couple of years in particular i don't like to make new trades in the early part of the session because as you know the methodology i'm using here I don't want to be day trading. The only time I'm going to be day trading is if I buy something and it very quickly slices below my stop loss. And I might find myself out of something in a matter of hours. But obviously, I try to limit those occasions. And one of the things that I have found that has been working just at least in the past couple years, much more so than even previously, is not getting in too early in the session. And I read something about that last night, in fact. One of my trading friends who's uh, an asset manager does some some more of the risky, smaller trades, but he was commenting on something very similar about just not getting in too early, waiting until the later part of the day. So that's why I, I had a... You know, you see these these... Very enthusiastic gaps higher. We saw it today. Today is a perfect example. I started out the show talking about the Mario Draghi comments and a lot of this enthusiasm off of Europe and perhaps making the ECB more like the Fed. And you saw this huge gap higher. We knew we had the housing starts numbers coming in a little bit later. I just wanted to be a little bit cautious, and I don't know whether it was the housing starts or just some people taking profits. Who knows? It's hard to necessarily attribute every market move to any particular news event. But you did see a pullback a little later in the session. You know, doesn't mean this this could be a very opportune day to enter some new positions and the subscribers of the low price leaders newsletter you might see that i potentially could send out some alerts a little bit later today have to go back in and analyze some of these watch list names and see where we're at with regarding to the moving averages and just want to take a little look at some of those so let me let me go back here to some of the names that we are seeing moving let me show you a a mid cap name that's that's moving today and talk about this one a little bit now this is tractor supply tsco this is another one of these now i've got that up for you there on a weekly chart and you can see that it pulled back oh you know what i'm going to come back to this after the break this segment went by pretty quickly but i want to come back and we'll take a look at tractor supply and what's happening on that one After the break, I'm Kate Stalter. This is the Small Cap Roundup. Stick around. We'll be right back. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find in 
an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. It gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and I very, very strongly support the use of this opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit tfnn.com today. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Time is the great equalizer of all mankind. Time doesn't care about winners or losers, who succeeds or fails. Time only cares that you played the game. Question, are you playing the money game? Is your money working as hard for you as you are for it? I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, a daily trading and investment newsletter service, and we're celebrating our one-year anniversary. In year one, we generated a 30% profit. Plus, I provided 26 hours of live coaching to my clients. My daily newsletter service is available by 8 a.m. each day and covers the stock, futures, currency, and commodity markets, along with all the current patterns that you can trade. Each newsletter is packed with education, and it's yours for as little as $3 per day. And for the next 30 days, you can try it risk-free. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your journey to great wealth today. If you're waiting for a better tomorrow, remember this. Today's tomorrow will soon be yesterday, and your clock is ticking. Mastering Probability. Now is your time. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, last segment. Welcome back. I'm Kate Stalter. This is the Small Cap Roundup. And I tend to look at mid-caps really the same way as small caps. A lot of them kind of, you, you start out with some of these smaller names, and voila, they become mid-caps over time. So this is one that I just put up the chart there, Tractor Supply and got that on there on a daily chart for you once again now this is interesting if you're taking a look there on tiger tv you can see that you've got the that 50 day has been heading lower but we're probably we're going to see we're going to see an upside reversal in that as a result of today's action so this had been really a very very ugly chart there had been some analyst downgrades in this and some just overall disappointment in some of the performance here. but and, and I'm just taking a look here. A little bit of erratic earnings and revenue performance. We had a 
a quarter over quarter revenue decline. However, what you do see, though, is some obviously Wall Street looking at some better potential after the earnings report, and we have a move up today of thus far about 16, a little bit shy of 16%. So looking pretty good right now, just want to see, let me just take a look at what this one has done historically. This is one of those you had a rollover here, obviously, from this new high previously, but this is one that actually can tend to rally quite a bit. In other words, when it surpasses a prior high, you frequently see occasions on this stock where it keeps going. I talked about that a little bit when I was guest hosting on Tom's show yesterday, that a lot of stocks, they, they tend to have long-term trading patterns that show you that when they rally to a new high, they pull back. So it's more of a stop and start kind of thing. Tractor supply is one historically that just kind of, that tractor just keeps rolling along. So those are, those are interesting, interesting stores for me as a, as a city slicker, which I really am, but I was out at one of those stores a few weeks ago, about a month or so ago, for the opening of the tractor supply store in Edgewood, New Mexico. I was with an animal rescue group that I work with. They, they're they very good about doing animal adoptions, so not saying anything about the stock here, but I do like the company policy that they let animal rescue groups kind of bring their tents and their crates and their dogs and sit out in front and adopt animals, and we did have a successful adoption from that event. So that was very good. Let me go over here to one more small cap to show you. I've got about a minute left, but I wanted to show you this one that's also moving up in heavy volume today. This is Ancestry.com. Now, this is something else I was alluding to a little bit earlier that a lot of times you'll see a gap higher, and you don't necessarily want to chase it because it could be a little bit out of range, and you'd like to see some kind of pullback that might offer an entry opportunity, and that's what I would be looking at with this one. This is a small cap, falls under the bailiwick of what we do, in the low price leaders newsletter and this has a market cap of about 1.4 billion as of now and and the volume has gone up in the past couple of sessions so we're seeing an average of 700 about 710,000 shares a day last I'm looking here that that'll probably settle down a little bit and there is quite a bit of overhead here that you see on the weekly chart I've got a few seconds I can show you this but depending on how this one continues to act relative to the short-term exponential moving averages, this could be a viable buy opportunity in the next few sessions. So I may continue to watch this one. All right, I'm Kate Stalter. This is the Small Cap Roundup. Good to have you joining us today. I will be back here with you on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Until then.